Hey guys. Hey, how are you? We, we thought we'd see the, uh, yeah. the chief here. Well, welcome to my house. I have the largest house in Venice because Venice is my house. So I have a mobile bedroom basically, which is the chief. And then I have uh, like world culinary choices in the food court across from my storage. That's my kitchen. I've got Gold's Gym. That's my, uh, that's my shower and restroom and, and the beach facilities. And then I just happen to have very long hallways between each place. They're blocks long. Yeah, the Chief's right here. I actually got a lucky space. I got this this morning. The good in America. This is a Chief. He was sort of like my steed when I drove around America to find the good in America. And when I got back to Venice, I had a storage space and my car and I needed a place to stay. And so I decided to do a micro living project. And um, this became my little life pod. Uh, so I decided five years in my van. Well, I, I met you five years ago when you were just deciding that. You mm -hmm. had just spent a year in the desert. Yep. Right? And I just was Alone. getting the van, yeah. And then you got the van. So I'm four a little more than four years in. So November 18th is when I am free of this decision. But it's been an amazing social experiment. And it's really taught me a lot about streamlining and prioritizing my life. Can I just say how lovely it is that she's playing the violin? This exact moment is why I choose to live in Venice. I have friends that have offered to let me stay and rent out rooms in their houses, beautiful houses around LA. And I, would, I literally would prefer to live in my car in Venice than in a mansion with a swimming pool overlooking the city anywhere else. Like this is home and that's because there's moments here that are just consistently magic. This is my bed. There's no kitchen or anything else in here. This is literally my bedroom and what I use to get around when I have to get around. I try to maintain a really low profile because you're a guest in these neighborhoods if you're living this way. So I generally try not to uh, try not to go into the van until after dark and I use a headlamp and close the curtains because I don't want people to feel like there's someone out here, you know, and then I leave early in the morning, you know, when the birds first start chirping or whatever, and then <clears throat> I have my routine, like the beach bathrooms open at seven. Compared to most of my friends that may only have like two or three bathrooms in their house, I have 10. I have 10 bathrooms to choose from right here, and I have six showers, so, and uh, eight sinks. Thus further confirming the size of my house. Venice is very much known for its homeless population. Sure. What is your, um, well, you don't consider yourself homeless, you consider yourself home free, but you do kind of share the same bathrooms and, you know, living rooms with them as well. Yeah, I, I, there's a permeability to my existence in that I feel comfortable sitting down. I know a lot of the guys out here and the gals. And I was giving out donuts to the homeless on Christmas morning and one of the guys that knows that I'm homeless too is like, how funny that you live in your car and you're giving, giving out donuts to the homeless. When I walk around with the donuts on Christmas morning, for instance, and you look them in the eye and you, they see that you see them, it's really, that's the gift is that connection, you know, the donuts are just the... That was kind of the catalyst for the series, was that I see, I live downtown in the Arts District, and I see homelessness everywhere. And it, it became so visible, it turned invisible. So you're talking about how, um, how the homeless, because of their, uh, because of their constancy, y you tend to be able to just filter them out eventually. They become, they're so visible, they become invisible. Which is why we started doing the series, just to, and really just to go and have conversations with people who don't have homes, period. <laughs> Not only who don't have homes, but don't have a voice. You should come out and surf with me sometime. I have an extra, I have me extra boards. Surf? Yeah. <laughs> you live in California now. You can't like escape California without getting. I'm terrified in the water. of sharks. Of what? Sharks. There's sharks out there? Come on. I mean, there's sharks out there, but... I... Remember, you told me that if you're afraid of something, <laughs> that you're going to go do it. So I'm holding you to that. 
I'll get you in the water and you're gonna go, oh my God, I actually like this. <laughs> my situation obviously is very different from the homeless because mine is a choice. The homeless at any moment can be uprooted and moved. Their stuff can be thrown away. They have no sense of, of, of safety, like not even having a bag, like a bag. You know, just everything is, um, you know, you carry. Like this, this guy doesn't have a bag for his clothes. He just carries it all in a wad. Isn't this the guy that does like the handstands on that? Uh, yeah, that's me. Can I you do that? You. Can you do that for us? You got 20 bucks? I'll give you five. All right, that'll work. <laughs> I'll do it for five. Yeah, I do it for five. Oh, wow. I would have did, did it just because What's you guys your name? Are admiring, man, and being nice. Oh, that's cool. It. But everything helps, you know. How are you, sweetheart? Lisa. Hi. Hi, Lisa. I'm Andrew. Andrew. Do you live around here? Yes, sir. I live uh, actually right on the next block. Yeah? Yeah, within the Muscle Beach District. Are you in one of the apartments here? Or you, you live in... Uh, um, I live in my van, so... Well, you know, like right next to the Irwin. I kind of stay like over there. Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew. I go by the Muscle Up King. I'm Trek. The, nice the Muscle nice what? Man. The Muscle Up King. Okay. okay. Right on. All right. All right. Let's see some of your strength, Andrew. Look, you got a crowd now. <laughs> nice job, dude. Such core and upper body strength. Well, there's another example of someone who's making the best of a situation. Right. He wasn't saying it outright, but he lives over near the Irwin, so. He's, you know, the key word is But he stay. looks pretty healthy. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I stay over by the Irwin. Yeah, it's all a little bit in your attitude too, man. This is uh, not a very big mural, but uh, the owner of the building wanted to do something that was Venice, and Charlie Chaplin lived in Venice, had some properties here. And so I did Charlie Chaplin as Robert Downey Jr. with Smile because Charlie Chaplin wrote that song, Smile, you know? Smile when your heart is aching. Looks like I'm gonna have to clean him up right here. That's pretty. <laughs>